big difference, big difference. Uh, I mean, look, black folks knew we were in trouble we, in 1958. You know, no one had to spell it out to us. You didn't need Martin Luther King Jr. to come tell you you're in trouble. But Dr. King was talking to the rest of the world. His, his gift was in talking to the rest of the world and getting them enrolled in the solution. What, he, what Dr. King would say is the civil rights movement was about saving a black man's body but a white man's soul. And that we're all in this thing together. And then he was a brilliant uh, marketer because he didn't put me and you in front of those marches, uh, marchers, because the, poli the, the TV cameras would have turned off and said, look, this is a fair fight. Uh, you know, these guys are more than able to take care of themselves, and maybe they even incited problems. He put women, well-dressed and educated, and children in front of these mob police officers when they turn on these hoses, and the image of that sparked outrage. So Martin Luther King was brilliant, and he also had Andrew, had Andrew Young meeting, meeting with 100 business leaders while he was marching, because he said, to, he called him Andy, Andy, if you, can, if you can get 100 business leaders to agree to anything, we can get the politics to come around. Why did the business leaders talk to him? Because 80% of the customers in that southern town were black. So it wasn't about black, white, red, brown, or yellow color race in, in America. It was about green, the dollar. Right here, so it, it was. They understood then that the that the political argument, the economic argument, the social justice argument, were the same argument, and and they had to come at it from a, a multiplicity of ways in a whole in a, in a more sophisticated way, uh, and and so Dr. King was a great strategist. You know, um, uh, Nelson Mandela was a great strategist. You know, many people in the ANC weren't crazy about him negotiating with the clerk. Mm -hmm. uh, his problem wasn't the white. Opposition at that point, his problem was his own uh, people. But it was a brilliant, a brilliant move. I mean, you get to the point where, where your jailers are begging you to leave jail. Come on now, unprecedented. That's look. I think that we've got to make prosperity the partner to peace. Uh, we've waged war unsuccessfully around the world. It doesn't work. Let's wage peace. Because any country that has a middle class and the dream of achieving the middle class is stabilized. Any country that lacks that it, uh, is, uh, is, I mean, look at, look at the war-torn places in the world. There's no middle class. Right? You have the very, very rich who feel they've got to oppress the very, very poor in order to keep what they've got, fear-based approach. You've got the very, very poor who feel, I'll never, as hard as I work, I'll never be able to achieve anything because, you know, there's nobody making 10 times my income. It's only some guy making $1,000 times my income. He gets that by repressing me. So I'm going to get it. I'm going to take it, right? So you, so you have anarchy, right? So you, you, I'm suggesting that, that there's another way you know, to come at this problem. And, and, and let's get out of the business of being experts in what we are against, which is the lazy approach and be in the business of figuring out what we're for. And, you know, there are 25 uh, political parties vying for office here in South Africa now in your elections. I think that's fantastic. It, I mean, it's fantastic. It's not a problem. That's a, that is proof that democracy is working. And if you have a good idea, you'll be a magnet for those people who believe in your ideas. You don't have to worry about the other 24 folks in the race. You, you just fo focus on the good news that you're offering. Next week, in part two of our conversation with John Hope Bryant, we get his insight on the importance of leadership in politics and in business. Well, what are your views on the conversation thus far? Write to us at insideout at enewschannel.co.za. For this week, that's Inside Out. Entrepreneurship um, is the key to Africa. I think that creating a generation of African entrepreneurs I was in Davos uh, for the World Economic Forum, and, and, and uh, Desmond Tutu and I were doing, doing the closing session on, on dignity. And uh, uh, one of the African entrepreneurs there said that, you know, if you're, if you're a, a, a major leader today, you're like an orchid in a hothouse. You need perfect conditions in order to thrive. Uh, but if you're from Africa, you're like a weed. You can grow anywhere.